What's up again, everybody? Today we have a very fun, very special episode because if you didn't hear, a few days ago, maybe about a week ago, the professor went on and announced that he was releasing a deck box of his own design. And wouldn't you know it, the professor's here today from Tolarian Community College. He took just an extended sabbatical so that he could come hang out on this channel and talk about that deck box. Maybe talk about a little bit of flesh and blood. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor. No, it's a pleasure to have you on here, to take the time out of the very busy schedule, and I'm sure it is incredibly busy working through a Kickstarter, uh, to just yes. sit back and, and talk a little bit about the Kickstarter, but also to just, you know, talk about card gaming in general. We can talk about magic, yeah. we can talk about flesh and blood. So, I'm curious, okay, I'm very curious to know how you're doing amongst all of the the craziness that is probably like designing a deck box, launching a Kickstarter, I wouldn't even know where that all that begins, honestly. Well, it began with me finding out, and it's pretty funny to me that it took this long, seeing as I've been reviewing products for eight to nine years now, but I never really met the people that actually designed the products. I've met the companies, I've met representatives, usually PR people from the companies. Sometimes I've met some of the executives and things like that, mm -hmm. but I never actually found myself in a conversation with someone who said, hi, I'm the person who came up with the idea for this product. I drew it out, I designed it, I wrote it, I did the specifications, and I made my thoughts and dreams a reality. And by just kind of a coincidence, I, I have a, a nebulous relationship with all of these companies to begin with. Sometimes mm. it's positive, sometimes it's a little icy, sometimes yeah. it goes back and forth. And just in one of my correspondences, I don't even remember how it came up, but I was speaking to a man named Adrian Alonzo, and he said, I designed the Ultimate Guard Boulder as well. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, I designed the uh, uh, Game Genic Squire and Watchtower and Dungeon. And I said, wait, you designed like all of those at Game Genic? Hmm. He said, the whole line, the whole line. I designed all the line and I was previously over here and I designed all of these products. He listed them off, the archive, the this. And I said, those are all like my favorite products. He goes, I know you've been, you've, you've really enjoyed my products. And I'm all, I have actually, like you just listed off most of my A quality items. And I was really shocked because I, I just didn't know really how it was done. And I didn't realize that one person across a couple companies, I mean, he changed, you know, jobs and stuff. He doesn't like work for multiple at the sure. same time. He's now, yeah. I think he's he's lead at, at Game Genic and also head director and stuff like that. He's moving up in the world, but that he had designed so many of my favorite products. And people had always asked me, do a deck box. And I didn't want mm -hmm. do a deck box because how do I, do? I don't know how to do a deck box. <laughs> How do you do a deck box? What do you? What do I call a factory and say, ah, uh, I want a deck take box. A thousand, I want a deck box. I don't know how to do this. And the only thing I would ever know how to do would be to get a company that makes like just, you know, those basic plastic, yeah. just basic plain. When you think plain deck box, what comes to mind? And they could like make one and stamp my logo on there it. There you go. And it's, That's all it's you like, need. Yeah. And I don't want to do that because I'm supposed to be known for quality and, and innovation. And like, that's what, what often is what I'm, I'm showing off on the channel. And so I never wanted to just do that. What am I going to do? Buy, buy a thousand at, 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 <laughs> at four bucks each and sell them for eight ninety nine each. And, and it's just a crappy little deck box. And, and so then there was the idea and I had it around that maybe, maybe a product that I'd given an A to like a, a favorite of mine, maybe I'd, I'd say, you know, I love, I love things like the satin tower or yeah. I love things like the, uh, the boulder. And I might say, Hey, can we get that product with just my logo on it? And it's not too much a conflict of interest because I already have loved this product for years. It's just a special thing. But that also gets into all these difficulties because the company that makes the product is gonna wanna keep, take the money from selling that product. <laughs> right. And so it's it's like the idea is, 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 well, do we wanna put my logo on it and split it or what? And it just didn't, make a lot of sense. And I, I, I think I think I might have floated the idea at one point with Ultimate Guard or not Ultra Pro, but I, I floated it with somebody, a vague memory of it. And that was the problem was they're like, well, you know, we've already got slim margins as it is. And, and it's a tough thing. And maybe we could do this. It's an interest. We are interested in it, but it would be like a limited edition maybe, or maybe we could sell it to you. And that was the thing that came up is maybe right. we could sell it to you. 
Eh. So when I found out about Adrian, I said, well, look, I kind of talked to him about that. And the first thing he said to me is, because I, I almost was floating the idea of like, I, I like a couple of these game genic boxes, maybe a, a logo. And he's like, stop. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put your logo on 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 my deck box. I want to find your deck box. I want to 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 help you create your deck box. You tell me what you want in a deck box, and I can draw it up and create it and design it, and we can do this. He said, "Why would I just want to take your logo and put it on my box? You should have your logo on your box." Very grandiose. He's yeah, that's a great awesome. man. Very. Yeah, no, he has very. We have an interview with him that by the time this. Uh, comes up will probably be up and you'll see he's a wonderful loving boastful uh uh <laughs> jubilant man and he's just very larger than life and he's just like no no of course you know which i am too so it, it was a good match in that regard and uh, that and would so be I, said, well, I gotta yeah. say that would be hilarious to watch the two of you interact and like design a deck box together let's do this yeah. no let's do this like we you're did. tinkering well, we did. And it, like was, a, it was a whole did you ever see that episode of The Simpsons where Homer designed his own car? It was a lot <laughs> like that, only I'm hoping with better results, because it really was like, <laughs> like it started out with him being like, well, what kind of deck box do you want? And I, 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 I mean, you'd think I would have a thing immediately, but at sure. first I was like, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> and, and so I was like, okay, well, what do I want? So I went home and I made this giant list for him. Mm. And, he, and I thought the list was convoluted and 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 it couldn't possibly all be in one box so they were just starting ideas but he just said okay i i take it and and he took it and he came back to me i think with three two or three designs i think it was three actually hmm. and he said here's some outlines designs he said what do you think and i said i don't like any of them <laughs> i said i i think they're good but they're not me they're not quite it. And so we talked, and I thought, this guy's going to be done with me. I felt terrible. He's like, no, 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 let's talk, let's talk. And we went through it, and it was a process. And at mm -hmm. one point, we actually had prototypes of a completely different deck box. It would not, if my logo was off it, you would never think, seeing it, that this was even made, perhaps even by game. It was fundamentally different. It was so different. I can't convey the 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 different look, different materials. It wasn't. It was going to be uh, uh, metal and all kinds of stuff, and it wasn't financially feasible. Where mm. if we did it, it would cost like a hundred dollars a box, and it holds one deck. And and look, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm yeah. not going to lie. I would really like to see. Like, I want to know fundamentally what that would actually look like. That sounds incredibly intriguing. Yes, it would be yeah. expensive, but. That is, I'm sure there's other people that would love to see what that looks like. But I apologize well, for interjecting. Go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it, it, I, it might come out someday. I, the problem was was that I, at that point, Adrian, I think, wanted to 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 see about a uh, a different material, and I was insisting on on a, a special type of uh, a certain metal that I said this was what I wanted. If this was an all metal deck box. I wanted it to be this. And he's like, that's really expensive. And I was like, how expensive? And he's like, you would have to charge 99 bucks and you'd be maybe, if you're lucky, making a dollar or two per sale. And it's, it would just be a nightmare. And you want to do more than that because there's always like surprise costs. So you don't want to, sure. you want to have a big safety. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one, it, it went away. And then finally we went back to the drawing board and we came up with what we, we ended up with here, which is the academic. Uh, and I really was in love with it. As soon as I saw it, uh, it, it had the look and feel and features of everything I had been talking about. And I, I really felt that we had found it. And then best of all is when he told me the numbers uh, and said that we could offer this for $45 instead of $90. Yeah. <laughs> I was really shocked because I was like, how much is this going to be? $60, $70. It's made of really good quality material. And he said, no, 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 we're calling in some 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 things. We can do this uh, where you would charge $45. And the way we're doing it this way is that I am buying it from GameGenic. GameGenic isn't making this like they make a regular deck box that you buy on the shelves. Right. I'm going to GameGenic and I'm going to say, I need 10,000 of these from you for you to print and send to me. And then I'm selling them those 10,000 to the people who committed on the Kickstarter at $45. And that leaves me, we calculated, he was very helpful with taxes and, and shipping. Well, shipping's mm -hmm. paid for by the customer, but like I pay for some aspect of it. And uh, all, oh, there's all these fees, taxes, every country, because we're doing <laughs> yeah. worldwide shipping. It's crazy. 
And so he's yeah. like, okay, so blah, 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 blah. You sell it for 45 and you're safe. You're gonna hopefully put a couple dollars in your pocket, uh, which is great. And, and if something happens, you've got a safety net. So if something doesn't happen, then you're putting a couple more dollars in your pocket, which is also great. But that's that's the way they do it. He said, you know, it was a really a lot of kindness on his part. He didn't have to do that. And and he did. And I mean, I was just the idea that I get to work with Game Genic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've given every company everything from fails to A's, but overwhelmingly Game Genic just puts out such quality products. They really oh, you know, do. consistently. They yeah. really do. I, I know, like, what is it? A few years ago, I got turned on to Game Genic. I think when they released. They released a um, a Keyforge deck box that yes. I saw. It, I was floored by how that thing looked and just felt like everything about that deck box felt premium. And then from that point forward, I was like, wow, everything Game Genic is putting out feels like that. I was really, really shocked by it. I was very impressed. And I think they've just kept that rolling. So super high quality, in my opinion. I think it was a really good call, at least as far as from what yeah. your video showed. Yeah, yeah, and that was that was the the thing was I was worried we were talking and I was like so is this going to have that same quality as like a regular high end or luxury or just premium game genic uh, uh, box or are they not going to want to do that and and there was a lot of negotiation about this and again I do feel there was a lot of kindness on their part where mm. they introduced me like for example again this is my Kickstarter not theirs but they've helped me with like this is what taxes are this is what shipping. Like they're not doing shipping, I'm doing shipping. They're like, you're gonna have to hire a fulfillment company and that's not us, but They've like walked some, you through it step by they step. They walked me through it. They said, that's so great. for Europe, if you do one of these companies and they introduced me and it was really nice, uh, a lot of nice stuff. And and again, helping with, they showed me some spreadsheets because hmm. they, they they know this stuff. Uh, they, you know, and uh, I'm an English major. So I definitely felt like I was in good hands, uh, uh, good friends in that regard. Uh, but more than anything, it's just great because it's it's uh, I basically contracted with them. OK, when the Kickstarter's over, I'm going to buy X number of boxes from you. We're going to send those boxes to, to to my distribution centers and then those will distribute them worldwide to people who want them. And we also were able to uh, design a few other accessories. I can't quite show them off. I can Ooh, show I'm one of them. About that, actually, I can. Yeah. I, oh, I can't. No, it's not that we're not allowed to. I, I can't no! show you. You'll have to you'll have to tune into the Kickstarter video. When it goes live, uh, there's reasons. It has to do with like the people manufacturing hmm. these for me, uh, and not doing a like doing it too soon. Uh, so it has to be like right when the Kickstarter goes live. For can you say ne- what type of accessory it is? Let's just say that a lot of people have felt that if they do not have a deck that fills up this main compartment sure. entirely, they've said, "Gosh, the cards might." fall over uh, mm-hmm. or, or just jiggle around. And let's just say that uh, there's an accessory that is a, a, actually a, a creation of Adrian's in response to me saying, Adrian, uh, cards are like, if I have a modern deck in here, I have uh, yeah. uh, even a classic, if I have a, a single sleeved classic constructed uh, flesh and blood deck in here, there's all this extra room. And wouldn't it be nice if there was something that created a space in here uh, that is perfect for whatever size your deck is. And he said, sure. I have an idea. Hmm. And he designed this this brand new item that will be offered. Uh, it's his, of course, but it will be offered for the first time via the Kickstarter with my logo on it. And, oh, and it will take cool. care of that problem. Uh, it will take care of that problem. And then another, maybe some of the more typical gaming accessories that you might think of, but with a special Telerian Community College twist. So that a lot of exciting really cool. things coming, yes. So what you're saying, this is what I'm basically getting. What you're saying is that this entire process has just been super easy, barely <laughs> an inconvenience at all. It's not a problem at all. Like this is just yeah. been smooth sailing, right? Oh yeah, so so smooth. <laughs> uh, definitely the Kickstarter is stressful, and it's very scary mm. because I'm sure you've heard tales of people who like did their own Kickstarter and it it was successful on the surface but then it turned out they had not calculated for some something and then yeah. they ended up in trouble so like I, I think there was one where they said hey what if we we send a poster to everybody if if we hit this this funding goal and then suddenly they had to send out 20,000 posters and to send a poster out you have to roll it up in a tube sure. and they had not envisioned the logistics of that and then to send a tube is is six dollars or whatever right. it is and it ended up bankrupting them and they were like we we literally were they were in deep trouble over just over adding a poster. poster yeah 
and and all these mm -hmm. other Kickstarters where where fulfillment was an issue. That's another thing with Game Genic, where if somebody says, "How do we know that you're going to be able to fulfill on the deck box?" It's like, well, it's already contracted with Game Genic that I'll be able to buy X number at this price. Uh, uh, and and like they're they're reputable. They're, they're you can trust we can trust them in that regard. Uh, so we've taken a lot of steps to ensure that. I'm safe, but it doesn't mean I'm not scared a little bit and a little nervous. Uh, yeah. And and definitely, uh, I, for me, the biggest thing is is I want to ensure that everybody in the world has an easy shipping experience. And that's very out of both my and Game Genics hands. But they introduced mm -hmm. me to some great, great fulfillment services that we will send the boxes to. That basically there'll be one in Europe to be able to handle all of the European shipping, and one in North that's, America to handle really North good. America and stuff and we'll have shipping to australia and new zealand but that is going to be probably they're used to it it's going to be expensive for that sorry sorry it australia is. new zealand you live all the way out there it's all this water yeah. we tried but like i mean we have it but you know what it costs it's not just me it you order expensive. anything in australia it's going to cost you money i'm sorry but uh you know europe and north america eh, it'll hopefully be more reasonable because we're doing it this way yeah that's actually amazing to even just have the ability to ship to Europe at, at that cheaper price because you said they, they're distributing that way. That's really, really amazing. Yeah, I'm curious. I though I want to go back and uh, this is one of the things that I was when I first, you know, saw the video kind of play out and saw the spoiler build up to it. Um, the, like the first thought that went through my head is, wow, what what is it like? What led you to design the deck box? Because I know you've been reviewing. I mean, I would say that you're the foremost authority in reviewing like card game accessories and deck boxes and like large scale, small scale stuff. So at what point did you just go, I think it's time or was there like a moment in this, uh, you know, chance encounter that you were like, we should design a deck box? Like where, what happened? When was that for you? That was, that was really when I met Adrian and that I thought, again, the list of products of his that I've loved is is so long and when he was already i mean he offered it that he was like mm -hmm. i would love to draw and sketch and, and and design the box for you and it's just like well there's the opportunity and i i think it's a once in a lifetime opportunity mm -hmm. i don't know that again like this this is not this is not exactly like like business as usual for game genic they're 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 working with me uh in a a, a creative cooperation way so like it isn't like oh now every year i'm in the deck box business i yeah. don't even think i'd want that either it's just a one-time opportunity to get to do this for me i think and and so i i jumped on it i jumped on it and and i've just done so many reviews where for all these boxes even some of my favorites there's always a lot of players who it won't work for. There's always yeah. so many players where like I say, oh, I love the, the Ultimate Guard Boulder. It's compact, it's tight, it's great. And they say, doesn't work. My deck has uh, 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 sleeves with KMC Perfect Hard Inners. They won't fit in that, I can't use right. it. And I go, okay, I've got uh, the, the, the this, I've got this this deck box, it's great. For Commander players, well, I, I don't play Commander. I play Modern or or, or, or I, I've, I've got a couple of Blitz decks, that doesn't work. And all of these different, Every player has a format yeah. or a game yeah. in that format. I play Pokemon TCG, I play this. And I wanted to figure out how there could be a one size fits all deck box. And that is part of this add on that's going to help for the cards not falling over. Um, like I even reviewed some deck boxes that were for cards and people, they were larger ones. Like there's a, a card slayer that's, that's this giant long thing. Yeah. And people said, oh, I can only put my cards in it, I can't put deck boxes in it. And one of the things I said to Adrian was, I'd like it to be able so that you could put your cards in it, but also what if you want to store your deck boxes? And he came up with this really great removable acrylic. This is a hard acrylic divider. It slides out of the grooves on the yep. side and then slides in to grooves on this side. So it's still part of there. And now, instead of it being a perfect fit for sleeved cards, it'll hold most standard size deck boxes. I mean, obviously not everything, but a standard size deck box like a boulder uh, or even a satin tower if yeah. you put the removable bottom inside one of the drawers. 
uh, fits in there and you can still put cards. Now you can put top loaders. And if you wanted, this entire compartment can now hold top loaders. And there's a lot of right, people who have like 60 great. top loaders. Yeah. Yeah. But, because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like, so here's a bunch of top loaders that are on my right? desk. Okay. I'm doing the, I'm doing a video later with a friend who's uh, talking through his Lexi deck for flesh and blood. Sure. And I'm sitting here thinking, uh, this was one of the first impressions that I had when I watched the video of you actually just going through and showing the functionality. Um, I have dug around and just like tried out a variety of different deck boxes that all just have this problem of not being able to just neatly carry around top loaders. How many and top loaders do you need? You're going down to play Flesh and Blood at the local game store. Let's say you're bringing one deck. Again, yeah. that is the biggest criticism a lot of people have had, and it's fair, is that this is largely designed with the idea of I'm bringing one deck, not three. But if you're bringing one classic constructed deck down to the game store uh, and you've got your top loaders, how many top loaders come on down with you? Boom, let's do at least six. We got, uh, we six? got six this for top this. This top compartment up here holds 11, actually. I so was 11, curious about that. I was going to ask, how many does the top hold? The top holds 11. Uh, now, tech, I, I'm saying 11 as a conservative estimate. Uh, if you, depending on, so some people put like a penny sleeve inside or a sure. KMC, perfect. There are people who will say to me, I was able to get 13 in there. I'm not going to say 13. Uh, I'm going to say can, I'm going to say 11 in here, and then you can put three to four top loaders in this side compartment as well, yeah. which makes for yeah. a total of 14 to 15 uh, top loaders. Conservatively speaking, uh, there's there's things people do that make it thicker yeah. and smaller and stuff based on how they sleeve. If some people put it in a, a double sleeve inside. Sure. You know, yeah. that's different. But you know, basic penny sleeve inside, so you can hold a full equipment package. This will also fit snap cases. Uh, so you know the Ultra yeah, Pro snap cases and little gems, uh, right? Those little those and little it'll ones. it'll uh, the gems with the brackets on the mm -hmm. top. Uh, you can fit that in there. The snap cases from Ultra Pro, you can actually fit five inside each of these removable compartments. So depending on how many of those snap cases you use, they'll fit in those compartments. These removable compartments will each fit a blitz deck. They will each yeah. fit a sleeved blitz deck. And so even though I said one deck. Basically, the idea is, is you can have your classic constructed in the main compartment, you can have your top loaders here and here, and then you can have a blitz deck in each uh, a removable tray. And, you know, so you're with that down there for a blitz event. Oh, all right, let me pull out this blitz deck here. I don't want to say, I was talking to you before we start recording, and I don't want to say this is the first deck box designed with flesh and blood in mind, but it's definitely the first flesh it's definitely the first deck box designed by uh, two people who play and enjoy Flesh and Blood and wanted to make sure that Flesh and Blood players' needs were met as well as Magic the Gathering and Pokemon and Digimon players' needs. And so that's why Top Loaders, it's not just... I, I think another company, like hearing Top Loaders, I've seen it before, there's like space for one, but this yeah. can hold again 11 top loaders right here right. and uh, three to four, depending on how, how, how thick you make them inside in this side compartment. Or if you do this, and I'm gonna be honest and confess I haven't counted the total amount, but uh, you can hold quite, this is now all top loaders can be in that main compartment. Right if you want. And so that's like quite a few. That'd be a lot of top loaders. You can that would be, some people have it. Loaders. I've had people, yeah. I've had people say that. And so again, we wanted this to be a deck box for everyone. So that if you've got a commander deck that's triple sleeved or a couple of blitz decks or what have you, this works for your needs. It works for one deck. And I think of it like a briefcase in that sense. Right. You know, you've got, in the way that you could be like, have a filing cabinet of all these important papers. But when you go into work, you don't bring that entire filing cabinet with you. You take out a folder and you put that folder yes. or two mm -hmm. in your briefcase and you've got your fancy Armani briefcase or whatever. And that is what this is. It's like, if it wasn't the academic, maybe it would be called the briefcase. That's a good example. It's a good uh, metaphor for what this is because it's yeah. exactly that. You, you take, and not only that, you can do well, you just grab a deck box, put it inside of right. the uh, main compartment, and then run from there. And what I was what I was thinking earlier is, wow, as I throw all of these <laughs> top loaders Be all careful. over the place. Some of wow. those are worth money. Forget Some of those are worth it. money. Well, it's like this idea of, like, I can go and bring a classic constructed deck with top loaders in this, in the main compartment, and then I can put a blitz deck in one of those smaller compartments with 
the and now that you said you could do like 11 top loaders i can do that with the top loaders in the top and then put dice in the bottom for me yep. this answers the fundamental question that i've had for i don't know about a year now um going to like the calling events at like uh the, the variety of locations around the u.s that they've been at is like how do i take maybe one or two blitz decks and a larger classic constructed or multiplayer ultimate pit fight deck with me in a way that's convenient and not just like throwing four of these in and right. then like grabbing out this in my opinion this does that very well and so i think it's incredibly well designed in that respect because of the flexibility that the design comes from i think it's, yeah it, i saw this and i was like that's that's literally what I need when I'm going to hop on a plane with a backpack, fly somewhere else, and play yeah. in like a large scale event for fun. Right. And again, like uh, uh, I understand a lot of people have asked for like this idea of I've got 16 different decks, sort of thing. And that that's not really what this is, but something that holds 16 decks isn't going to fit in your backpack exactly. the way that this does. And you mentioned going down to the calling. One thing that I really love about it is that as opposed to a lot of boxes where the flap is open like this, so if you want to access it, it's taking up your play space. Yeah. Here, the flap just wraps around, the body clicks together, there's yeah. nubs and magnets, it holds on tight, secure, it just clicks into place, and now it's, t it's taking up the least possible play space you can have it open yeah. to access that equipment. Exactly. You want to access you want to access the uh, uh, removable compartments. It comes down just like that. Again, it's just perfect optimization. Even in these little removable trays, mm -hmm. the side comes down and there's a little nub. You're probably not seeing it too clearly on the camera. And that allows you to just pull up yeah. each card, including the bottom card. So we really put a lot of thought and care into every possible aspect. On the inside compartment, it has those little grooves as well so that you can grip your deck. Uh, easily and effectively and it's just it's just all right there I think it's so. there's a lot of attention to detail that is very noticeable and all those little details um, even just the flap down on the on the trays it just struck me as very uh, is very flexible it's very well designed and it's like the thing that I want to take with me and it's also just beautiful it's also really oh, yes. really pretty and uh, like the possibility of there being more colors means there's more customizability as far as that's concerned. But even yeah. just the one that you have sort of like a uh, very similar, very close to black with that purple inlay is mm -hmm. really, really luxurious in that respect. So it is sort of like a high end briefcase in a way, isn't it? Yeah, and we will have, so obviously, again, the process is, is that uh, we're buying in bulk through Gamegenic to manufacture. And so, colors are, are a little difficult to do. We are going to have alternate colors available when the Kickstarter goes live that can be unlocked and selected by people. Sure. Uh, what we've done is since we can't offer too many is we'll have votes. And so I know that's not fair for everyone, but there will be alter an, an alternate color that can be voted on at the very least and some other tiers and, and sure. customization options. It, it, it isn't like when you go to the store and there's 15 colors to choose from, of course, but it does mean that there will be at least one other color combination of yeah. this available as well as some other, uh, a few other things that I can't talk about just yet that will unlock. <laughs> and oh, pop up on the website or I'm on so the Kickstarter. Curious. I'm so yes. curious to know what yes. those are. We will find out soon enough because I think it launches what next week, right? The Kickstarter starts March 15th, the Ides of March. So <laughs> if this is up before March 15th, go follow the Kickstarter. But if it's up after March 15th, go check out the Kickstarter page because a lot of new things are dropping on it. A lot of new things are unlocking on it. I think you're going to see some, some big success because I've looked around on the various social media and I've talked to a lot of people, and there's a lot of people that have a lot of nice things to say about it, myself included, because I am I was absolutely floored by everything about that that deck box. Just seems like right up my alley. And I know that you mentioned it earlier. There's there's going to be people that it doesn't necessarily work for because they're looking for something different, and that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with trying to um, you know like take 14 decks in like a quiver or something like that, right? Or, oh yeah, you know, quiver's great. Deck. It all fits whatever you're looking for. But for me and the way that I'm planning to use a deck box, this has a lot of answers to yeah. a lot of the question marks that are that are basically just made by going to a local game store and playing, right? Yeah.
And you know, I, I mean, I still, I, 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 I'm not, it's not like I'm working for or, or in some kind of sponsorship with Gamegenic. Even in my reveal video, I talked, I, I talked probably more about non-Gamegenic deck boxes than Gamegenic deck boxes <laughs> because I designed, well, I designed, I told Adrian to design. That's the <laughs> yeah. thing. I want to be really clear. I felt bad. And I, I, that was one thing I also spoke to Adrian a lot about, because again, I was Homer Simpson. There's a scene in that car one where he scribbles off their really nice design and he draws this loopy design. And that's really what the process was. It was me going, you need a horn here, here, and here. It's like, <laughs> I really was. I was like, we need to be hold top loaders, not just one top loader. I need to be able to have my entire equipment package in top loaders and, and commander players like top loaders too. We need lots of top loaders, but but also Everywhere. this, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's what it was. <laughs> and Adrian went and designed, did the actual work. I don't know how, I can't draw a straight line, but, uh, one of the things is is that I did say it has to be able to fit a multitude of deck boxes because people own boulders. And he, of course, he designed the boulder. He now doesn't work for Ultimate Guard, but he designed the boulder. He designed uh, uh, many other ones. And I said, we need to make it so that it is not proprietary mm -hmm. to game genic designs, because that's no fun. There, there, there was a product recently, I won't say which company, and it was a great product, an excellent product, but it had very specifically been designed so that it's only gonna work with, the, with that company's deck boxes and i said it's really too bad because if i could put this other deck box that i like in here i'd still buy it and use it and a lot of people mix and match like that and so i i showed off all my favorite deck boxes in the review on this i yeah. I, I love the quiver Qu uh, the quiver is excellent and and the quiver is a better financial deal as well like this was not the sort of thing some people talked about that i love budget and affordability which i do and this is not, I don't have the capability to do that because I'm working with a, a, another company as well as a few others behind the scenes. And this isn't the sort of thing where I can be like, all right, I'm going to manufacture this for a dollar and sell it for three. I, I don't have the capability to right. do that. We had to go on the premium end. And I did still hopefully keep the price down at 45. A lot of people said to me, you know, you could charge 50 and, and all, that extra five bucks goes in your pocket. And it's like, no, I don't want to do that. If anything, I was like, I was already asking, can we do thirty nine ninety nine? And yeah. it was like, no, we can't. If 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 someone so much as hiccups, you're in deep trouble. <laughs> uh, at that point, at that price point, you're in deep trouble. Uh, and, and so you need a safety net. And and so we worked out to forty five as a good safety net. But uh, it, it's not a budget. It's it's not a budget one. Quiver's a great deal. Uh, the 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 satin tower is a great individual uh it's one of my favorite deck boxes it's about 10 bucks they uh, uh get a toolkit they're 15 bucks at home depot those are all fantastic things this is for a different a different sort of purpose it is, is it's what more, it is it's more luxurious and it's one of those that you buy and you have a feeling of you know yes. like it gives you a distinct feeling like you can pick up like for example here's a and this is no knock on channel fireball this is a channel fireball deck box i got it a car right. and i actually use it a ton um you can kind of see it's like starting to get the wear on the sides Sure. Um, and it functions it like I can throw it in a backpack. I can take it. I can, you know, um, yeah. play games and all that sort of thing. But when I pick this up, I don't feel intrinsically attached to this. And I don't feel like it, the, the feeling of opening it and the feeling of having something really nice and taking, taking the cards out. There is, uh, something beautiful about having that feeling intrinsically about a piece of product like it's it's why i own a leather satchel okay sure sure you know i don't need a leather satchel i can i can right. get one that's made of conventional materials but that when i open the leather satchel and undo the clasps that feels intrinsically deep down more fulfilling and more satisfying and i want to take that and show that and use that and and play with that deck box over something like this, which totally functions. And same thing yeah. with like other deck boxes that you described. There's nothing wrong with those. But I yeah. think what you've struck here is something that has a nice balance of, of price point, usability, flexibility, and in my opinion, luxury. And I think that's kudos to Game Genic because I feel like they do they do a, a ton of good stuff with that. I'm curious, before I jump into some questions, there is one question though I'm really I'm really interested in because you mentioned at the very the very beginning, one of the things you said was you had a laundry list of things that you gave right. um, them to design, right? Right. What like what are some of the things that when you were designing this that were like your overarching 
goals or like the feeling or was there something very specific functionally yeah. that you wanted? It was, I know you touched it on was function. It was function at first. Like I said, we almost went with an all metal uh, uh, box version. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely do. I'm a little bit more of a leather and wood aesthetic person. And and, and so I must admit that uh, uh, the materials on this one do please me a bit more than the metal. But the, the big thing that I said was uh, to be able to make it so that no matter whatever anybody plays, that if you play Pokemon, the Flesh and Blood, you play, play Digimon, you play Magic, and within those games, whatever format, whatever deck size you have, whether you double sleeve, triple sleeve, single sleeve, double sleeve with KMC Perfect cards, whatever, I wanted to make sure that that the box worked for your deck. Mm -hmm. And and that was the first and foremost one. And then we went down the list and, and we went down the list. Top Loaders was one that was high on my list because of Flesh and Blood. I mean, we do use Top Loaders in Magic. Predominantly, people like their commander sure. in one Top Loader. So that's not the same as Flesh and Blood where we will have upwards of, depending on your equipment package, you know, where you you you, you might have uh, 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 half a dozen or more top loaders in yep. your hero, of course, or, or multiple, you got a couple hero cards and stuff like that. So again, I wanted it to be able to hold multiple top loaders, but then also I had heard a lot of people expressing, so you, you said a minute ago, you've got that channel fireball box yep. and you were talking about the aesthetic, but what I would say is, is you might have 10 of those boxes on your shelf, but you're bringing one of them to the calling, but the one that you're bringing to the calling doesn't hold your top loaders and doesn't hold your dice. And so now you just go like this and that channel fireball box slides right in. Right. Top loaders go in these two compartments uh, or top loaders can even the uh, equipment package with that channel fireball deck will actually fit next to it in the main compartment. Dice can now be used in this compartment and you can still throw in a couple blitz decks for fun in between rounds with friends or a side event or something like that. Uh, and, and so that's the idea was that I wanted the deck box for everyone. And those were some of the main things that I, I said uh, within it, the idea of as I said, cards falling down, which is going to be via this accessory that we developed. It's only a couple bucks. Don't worry. It's not like some 1999 thing, <laughs> uh, but it's a really clever add on. And it also will work in people who have stuff like an archive or whatever, or just a, 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 a various long uh, card case. It'll yeah. it'll apply there as well. And it's just a clever little it's not just a basic divider. There's a thing to it, you'll see. That's very, mm. very neat that Adrian thought up when I said, Yeah, the cards fall over and wouldn't it be great? And you know, you've got all this air that needs to be compressed out of them and and, and such. And so we came up with a little thing there. And so those were those were the main ideas that were in it, being able to do those things. And mm. there were some other aspects that were too specific like one thing people ask for a lot is the ability to show my commander or my hero in the mm -hmm. deck box like wouldn't that be neat if if you could you know like you've got your prism deck and at the front of the deck box in your top loader there's there's prism yep. and then you just slide up the top loader and we had ideas like i said there were other designs but i felt that that was so that narrowed it that might be like when when Game Genic probably eventually does release the first made for flesh and blood players deck box sort sure. of thing, and it's like yeah, a top loader or a, a, a ultra pro, you know, a, a snap case or a gem case that slide maybe not a gem case. I don't know. I'm giving them ideas here, but yeah, you know, slides in and and shows off your hero, and then top loaders behind it, and then your deck behind it. Like that's cool, but that also makes it very narrow. And I didn't want a narrow box. I wanted a broader one. Uh, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I just wanted a wheel that fit on every car, and that was well that was put. kind of the goal. Yeah, well that was put, that was yeah. that was what I what I really wanted was it doesn't matter if you drive a Prius or a a, a four by four. You know, like uh, uh, you can uh, whatever you've got, you can put these wheels on it, and and you'll enjoy the ride. And that was the idea. I think flexibility is is a massive success based on the way that. Uh, even just walking through everything that you did in that video just shows off how flexible this actually can be. And that yeah. speaks to the design being, uh, well, I guess they, they listened and they executed mm -hmm. at a high level. Okay, I have some questions that I got yes. from a couple of uh, a couple of people in the community. And the first one is a bit interesting because we've talked about top loaders. We've talked yes. about gym cases. We've talked about, um, you know, the snaps. I think I have one right yep. here. Uh, which are these ones as I dig through this random thing I have in the back, like this. Yeah, like snap, those are right? really gaining. Yeah, those are really gaining in popularity. And again, that will fit on the side of this. So, yeah. 
I did have someone ask about like graded slabs though, and I'm not sure because the slabs go extra, uh, extra up like that. I don't know how much they go. I actually don't have a card graded in a slab, so I yeah. wouldn't be able to tell you dimensions. But I'd be curious to know if that would actually fit in there on like on that side com main side compartment. What you are holding in your hand just there, yeah. that one, uh, I believe, is the the, the maximum length uh, sure. that's going to fit in that side compartment, that anything longer than that is not going to fit. So, yeah. Yeah, it does uh, stretch a little bit. I think they stretch a little further. Than yeah, that, that will be a little too far. So, for example, again, in the idea of, like, a lot of people wanted to know why we didn't make this hold like a plane chase deck. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a magic thing. Basically, oversized cards. Yeah. And, and they have these Magic the Gathering oversized cards, and, and if we had made it a little longer, a little bigger, it could have fit them. And it's like, again, that's a cool thing, and maybe Game Genic will do a Commander box one day that does that, but this wasn't supposed to be a Commander box so much as an all-purpose box. And mm -hmm. so we made the decision that no, oversized cards is too narrow of a, 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 a thing, and so that isn't going to fit. And I think, unfortunately, for, for a, graded, uh, a graded slab, such as you describe, unless I'm mistaken on the dimensions of how much that final one is, uh, uh, it's just, unfortunately, too narrow. Well, I think that's also, I think it speaks to the main functionality of it, too, because you're not going to be able, I mean, nothing can truly be a catch-all, right? You, yeah, of you course. You can't design, I mean, you could, you could make it longer. You can make mm -hmm. it longer to make it fit like two commander decks or something like that in the main compartment. But the more you do those things, the more you're just thinking about perhaps one niche instead of like trying to come up with something that is more flexible. Uh, because the longer you get, the less you like to put it in a backpack, for example, the less comfortable, the more space it takes up. This starts to become into the realm of other things. So it does speak to the flexibility of it. It's like, look, we just wanted to make something that uh, fits a variety of deck boxes and has a lot of flexibility. You can't hit it all, can you? No, no, of course not. And I, I don't think you'd want to anyway, because then you would end up with that car that Homer Simpson designed, where this would have a thing sticking out here and an antenna and a radio and a clock and a USB port and, and, and all of that. And so I didn't want that. Again, what I was going on was briefcase, where whatever my deck is that I'm taking to the calling to play, we're taking to the local game store to play, taking to my friend's house to play. Mm -hmm. It goes in there, and that if I'm doing more than that, I'm doing a weekend at a GP. Then yeah, yeah pick up, pick yourself up a toolkit uh, down at the, the the Home Depot or what have you. Go go pick up a quiver. That's great too. Those are great products, and I've I've given them enthusiastic A's on the channel and love them, and and that's fine. But that that wasn't the vision for this. Now you mentioned uh, the possibility of there being a clock, so we can put that as a stretch goal. We'll just <laughs> we'll just everybody assume that a clock is going to be on the side of the deck please box. no please no scotch tape a watch to all the deck boxes and mail those out and see what happens see what people think about right that, that would be hilarious um okay so there was this other question that i found very interesting as well you've touched on it a little bit already so i feel like i know the answer but uh someone reached out and said are there any plans to release different models of this overall design maybe something that's got a larger or a smaller main compartment or a change in Gosh. this place or that thing that's that's a very interesting question. That's a very interesting question that if I were not allowed to answer it, I wouldn't know what to say. I mean, I definitely mm. wouldn't say I wouldn't say no there are no plans if that were something that I that was planned but I wasn't allowed to say. And I'm not saying no there are no plans. I think that's a great question. I think that's a really great question. And I agree that that's something that people would probably want to see. <laughs> and I agree that that's something that maybe I would have thought of when we were coming up with this. And that maybe if we do well on the Kickstarter, a thing might unlock <laughs> that will then allow us funding wise to have have that. But I don't I, 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 I don't know what I would say if that were a thing that I'm not allowed to comment on for contractual reasons. Sure, contractual. I don't know. Yeah, you yeah know, contractually I will say this. there might be something preventing me from from confirming that that I'm in the new Spider Man movie. Uh, and and <laughs> you know, and but we all know he was in it, right? That was a funny oh, that's a great that's what I should have done. I should have said I, like You should have said that. We all knew Andrew all. Garfield was in it, but he didn't he couldn't confirm it. 
I think of that now. I think of that now when I hear that question. But yeah, good question, Grip. Very good well, question. Thanks for asking. The way you started that, the way you started that was like the quintessential teacher answer. Just want you to <laughs> just acknowledge that, like, you know, John, that's a fantastic question. Let's dive into right. that a little no, bit. Yeah, yeah. Did the author actually Gosh. intend for this? And then just let right. them go because, you know, they're going to find out the answer anyway. No, right, that's, uh, right. that is an interesting answer to that fantastic question. I One just have one. to stay tuned. <laughs> we'll have to watch the Kickstarter, I guess. Yeah. Which is, yeah. The, which is the play. Um, okay, so this is a, a very similar uh, question, but I think it, it can touch on something a little bit different. Um, so you've gone through this whole process. Um, right. You're in the lead up right now, based on when we're filming this, leading up to the Kickstarter uh, depending on how the Kickstarter goes and, you know, like if it obviously bankrupts you, this is not, you know, like if you, if you're just like on the that. side of the road, no, yeah, I, I should Please don't. That's that. no. so, that's, I, 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 I've been having a few ulcers because this is, again, I was very disheartened by how many people were like, why is Gamegenic just running a Kickstarter when they could create this and put it on their shelves? And it's like, cause I doing it. I'm buying this off Gamegenic. I'm doing it. It's my name. I had to sign contracts with them that they have no responsibility for what happens to me oh, if, no. if something goes wrong. And so let's, well, let's look, not I'm, say I'm, bankrupt. I'm just going to say, I don't think you need to worry too much about it because it's a fantastic yes. product first. And you've got a lot of great supporters out there, including myself. But if you had the opportunity to, to design a different product, be it like a, a card game accessory type thing, mm -hmm. What would be on your short list of things that you would love to, like, create your own version of? Is there anything that you could possibly think of? I think definitely the idea of uh, maybe tackling the best way for those people who have half a dozen decks to be able to transport them and carry them. Mm. Uh, uh, that's That might be something that I'm interested in. But the truth is, is that I'm a critic at heart, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm Roger Ebert, so this is my Valley of the Dolls. Oh God, I hope it's better than that. But uh, that was, for those who don't know, that was the one movie he wrote uh, or co-wrote and it was terrible. So <laughs> I, I think I just want to get back to my critic's chair where I can very easily <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down things and, and not worry too much. But I, I, I must admit it's fun. And I had a few ideas. I had an idea for a binder thing that's missing and I, yeah, I had an idea. It, it, this was definitely Magic the Gathering oriented where I said, mm -hmm. you know, I see a very clear need that is not being met in terms of binders. Uh, and so, but I, I think I, I, I think I might just give that one away for free in a video <laughs> and just say, hey, this is this is Someone for all the manufacturers out there. Could go run yep. with it, but no. No, I, I want to get back to being a critic. Yeah. I would think of binders. I think there's... what would flesh and blood need for binders? So I said I thought of what magic would need for for a binder, mm. but like, what does flesh and blood? What's a binder designed for a flesh and blood player look like? That's a good question. I don't know. I, there's a lot of people that are using like the four by three binders. You know, the yeah. ones that 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 go for. I don't have any of those, and it's probably better for me to get them. There's people that organize vertically. I'm not personally, and uh, I, I do things horizontally, like mm -hmm. card rarity wise. Um, but I'm, I was going through and I was putting away Everfest, which for anyone that doesn't know Flesh and Blood, it's the newest um, Flesh and Blood set. And I was putting that into the binder and I was um, putting away, there's a bunch of cold foils and they're, they're cold foil uh, potions. And I was putting those into the binders. Uh, and as I was doing that, I was thinking, is there, is there some way that we can better, um, I don't know. Is, is there a better system for slotting in? Is there, I mean, cause we have the side slot, we have the top slot. Is there a better system for a binder for doing, dealing with that? Or is there some way that we can better um, protect things? Maybe there's a hard case, like a top loader scenario where you can top load something in. Like, I think that would, I would perhaps use something like that. It's a good question though. Maybe one for a, one for a different video. Right. Maybe Don't maybe worry. you'll maybe you'll need to have that conversation with Adrian right. someday. I'm gonna talk to Game Genic. Right. Discuss things right now. All right. I have one more question for you. How are you feeling, leading up? Incredibly stressed, intense. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry. You know, we're supposed to as YouTubers. They say that uh, audiences don't respond well to anything too negative uh, in terms of how you're doing. They like mm. you complaining about things, but that YouTubers who say, 
I'm, 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 I'm not feeling well, or I'm sad that that works mm. like for a day. But if it goes over multiple videos, audiences get turned off. They want to. So like, I'm supposed to say, this is what I'm supposed to say. I'm feeling great. This is such an exciting process. And I just, it's, it's a dream come true. Well, it is a dream come true, but like, I'm feeling, how about this? I'm feeling calm, not afraid of <laughs> bankruptcy, not afraid of financial destitution, not afraid that I'm going to have some kid in France who didn't get his box and, and is going to make a Reddit post that gets 8,000 upvotes, even though everybody else got their box, but one kid in France didn't get it. And I'll get him a box and I'll get him a box. But now it's up on Reddit that this kid in France didn't get his box on time. And everyone's like, what a disappointment. What a failure. And, and no, that isn't running through my head at all. No, no, no. I'm calm blue ocean calm blue ocean. Everything will go fine in terms of shipping. I mean, there couldn't possibly be problems with shipping in 2022. No, it's all, it's all fixed. No, no, that'll be as smooth as sailing through a canal. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a little stressed. I'm excited though. And it's a good stress. I think that's what I said to you when we, in the pre-talk and you're like, how you doing? I said, oh God, I'm busy. I'm busy and I'm stressed. I'm sorry. I'm in a fluster. But it, and then I said, but it's good because I'd rather be stressed and busy than just sitting and still and stagnant. I'm moving. It it's 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 electric. I'm, I'm I'm taking more meetings than I can handle, and I'm forgetting some, and I'm I'm this, and I'm running around like a chicken with its head cut off. But it's vibrant and it's alive, and it's it it's only gonna happen now. Now never comes again, and that to me makes it all worth it. There are times in life that are exactly this moment where you you feel like maybe you've bitten off a ton and just like you're sitting there and yeah. you're going to chew it. But when you when you have the opportunity to like get to the end of the rope and, and finish the journey and then you look back and you go, you know, I'm glad I took those steps. I'm glad I did that because then you think about the alternative and the alternative was just the same thing as before, which is yeah. ne not necessarily a bad thing. Right. But it was the same thing as before. At least you got to go on a journey and one that I think will be very successful, even if it is stressful in the moment, like seeing yourself in the woods, all the trees. But when you actually get out of the forest, you get to enjoy the process and watch people, in your case, open up a really cool deck box. So I'm really pumped for you. And uh, I will be buying uh, probably several of these and then voting on whatever the other color options yeah, are. There's some color options as well Gotta as some options on the accessories. It. And that was that really weird question that that one person had, that really good question that someone had about if there might even be size configurations or different sizes or a double. Very interesting question there. I'd stay tuned to the Kickstarter. I'd stay tuned to the Kickstarter if, if I were you. That was so well guarded too. You didn't give oh. anything away whatsoever no. in the answer no. of that question. So just if anyone asks, just say, you know what? It's on a small YouTube channel. Nobody even watched the video. It's really not a big deal. Yep. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I appreciate you taking the time. I know it's super busy, and it was an absolute pleasure, again, to sit down and talk with you. Thank um, you so much for having me. It's, it, it really was relaxing. Like, I needed this. I, you were saying that to me. I was stressing out because I was even having equipment problems. And, <laughs> and where, when you said to me, for everybody watching right before we recorded, and you just said to me, hey, let's just sit back and have a conversation. Just just take it easy. And I was like, oh, my, thank God. Oh, <laughs> that's what I need right now. And that was really nice, just to sit back and chat. Always a pleasure, and I hope that next time we get to do it in person uh, over a nice meal or a drink. Let's do it. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. Boom. That was fun. Agreed. I agree. Ah, oh, crap, I didn't hit record. Are you kidding me? No, I'm just messing. Yeah, I hit record. That would have been funny, though. Thanks. That's just what a stressed <laughs> out on the edge guy needs.